Broadcasting, direct from Studio 12. You're watching Live with Bruce Gregory and At Jazz. Hey, what's up, Facebook? It is Bruce Gregory, and you have tuned in, of course, once again to live with myself at Jazz. And uh, we are uh, doing well. I hope you're doing well on this Monday, rainy, crazy, windy afternoon uh, here in the Northeast. Insane winds. Uh, you know, where I am, the winds were shaking all day, so um have no idea what's going on out there. I haven't been out myself, but, um, but like that. But... I do have a great show planned for you today. We have one, none other than Pete Hendrickson from Hendrickson Amps. He's going to tell us all about what's happening in the amplifier world and as much as he can about power and power amps and all that good stuff. And so if you're a guitar player, Johnny or Reed Miller, or any of my cats out there, make sure you got some good questions for Pete because he's got some, probably some good stuff he's working on and uh, some good things that he can tell us all about. But before we start, you know, I got to give a big shout out to my friends at Razor's Edge. Uh, you know, they make some great cabinets that um, that I get to use from time to time. And I have several of those that I love so much. Of course, GHS strings, you know, uh, if you're interested in strings, please let me know. Uh, we have a, a signature set out there and uh, we really like the we really like their strings. You know, Battle Creek, Michigan, trying to keep it in the United States as much as possible. And of course, Mr. Benedetto, Robert Benedetto. And uh, of course, Jackson Evans is going to be on the show. Hopefully, we're thinking next Monday, we're trying to secure that date with him. And he's going to tell us everything good about Benedetto guitars. And of course, Howard Paul down in Savannah, Georgia, they're making some great instruments. And that is no doubt. Uh, of course, my friend Jeffrey Ding, Speak Friends Cables, you know, Cloth Covered Wild and Neutric Ends. Uh, they are great, great products. And Jeffrey's going to be on the show to tell us what he's got working on. And not only cables, but a bunch of different audio audio stuff. And, of course, my man, Mr. Peter Hendrickson, Hendrickson Amps. And, uh, and I'm lucky enough to be running through one of his products today. Uh, but he has more than one of those. So without further ado... I'm going to bring the man on the show. Please, if you have questions, uh, if not, we're going to chat a little bit. And then, as I said to him, he is free to go on parole. So, without further ado, Mr. Pete Hendrickson, what's up, brother? Hey, Bruce. Thanks for having me on. Oh, man. Of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Got to have a little applause there. And yeah, uh, yeah, so, yeah. so tell me, man, what's happening in the world of amplifiers these days? What's the What's the good word? Well, uh, like most places, not much is happening right now, right, right. now, but, uh, I bet. um, there, you know, we had made a couple of ch product changes and new stuff that came out at the NAM show. So we're just, you know, uh, like over your right shoulder is uh, <laughs> a head version of our bud amplifier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah. That was pretty exciting to come together. Uh, that was, it took a long time to get the, the packaging right, but it's, uh, it's killer. You know, the, the Bud is just such a great tool. It's killer. got so many features. It's pretty much everything you need and plenty of power. Yep. And uh, we packed it all into this tiny head. So yep. it's like three and a half pounds. It's really small. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's killer. And I, and I, uh, I, you know, I'm running through it, you know, um, I'm running through it now, if you can hear it, but indirect into my board, but, um, but it, 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 it's definitely a killer head, uh, you know, and, uh, and uh, of course the buds are are too because you know i can't really find a product that you know i can't use in any kind of applica uh, application depending on if i'm playing with my band or if i'm playing solo or if i'm using tracks when i'm playing or what have you so yeah yeah and i know one of your texts was telling me when i was on the phone with him that you guys had been working on a head product for a while you know and and i don't think it was out at the time but 
Uh, but that's released there now, or is it in production? Yep, it's in production. We've got them in stock. Um, they're uh, we're uh, on a you know quarantine lockdown like everybody else, but we do have stock. We can ship. So if okay. somebody orders one, we can go in and you know put a label on it and send it out with FedEx. Nice. And that's that comes direct from your site, so it's just Hendrickson.com, right? HendricksonAmplifiers.com. And 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 uh, can you give us what is the street on those things? Uh, eight ninety nine. Eight ninety nine. That's good. Yep. That's good. They good. come with a gig bag. Um, yeah. Again, it's it's one hundred and twenty watts, three and a half pounds, two channels, pretty much every feature you can think of. Phantom powered. It's got Bluetooth aux in. It's also got a three and a half millimeter aux in. Um, it's got a balanced line out, um, both a, an XLR and a TRS balanced line out. And if you plug a uh, just a tip sleeve connector into that, it becomes an unbalanced line out. So there's really like nothing you can't plug into it or can't plug it into. That's great. Um, it doesn't need a speaker load, so you can run it like a two channel DI box. Um, it really, I mean, you can do anything with it. That's fantastic. That's it fantastic. takes and pedals great. Takes you know? pedals. <laughs> and it's got an effects loop, but it's got just a kind of a, an, an in out kind of thing, right? Yeah. It's a, the effects loop is on each channel and, yeah. uh, that's also a TRS connection. So you'll need a Y cable to use, uh, the effects loop, but that's not that uncommon for, right. we needed to save space. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it, it definitely is. And, and that's the thing, you know, like, because I, I tend to play a wide variety when I play live and when I had been, you know, up until the shutdown, but I have no idea what's going to be happening post shutdown right now. But, you know, I could be playing a very, very small, intimate restaurant gig where, you know, I'm basically just pushing a little air through my guitar to I'm playing on a big stage where they need a lot of volume. Uh, but they don't want a lot of stage volume. And, you know, I, I just bring one box. But now with the head, uh, you know, it just saves me so much time, man. You don't know how many times I, I this summer, the band it's last spring around this time into the fall. We had residency at Renaissance Harlem on 139th and Adam Clayton in New York city. And, uh, great place, you know, you know, open, open setup kind of thing. But you know, my place was on 139th, not that far. You know, but, you know, probably like four city blocks, yeah. you know, but walking four city blocks with a guitar and everything else. But I had my little bud. I didn't have the head then, but even the little bud was just so nice, man. People were just like, what's this guy doing walking with this thing down the street? <laughs> and, um, you know, but man, so much, you know, savings and space and, you know, perfect for the room, you know, to be surprised right. how much the little bud, because you still make the six inch cube, which is, you could probably see to the... Yep. that side of the screen uh and uh that was that was actually my introduction to your products and i use that for a lot from many small gigs but in the big gigs and uh and so i'm excited to get the get the head back out you know yeah. once we get to the well that's what we found when we first introduced the bud i had ordered a bunch of extension cabinets because we sort of assumed that um most people would need you know, two speakers because one six and a half inch speaker couldn't cover it. But when we got it out on the market, we found 90% of people like, wow, that tiny speaker covers everything just fine the yeah. way the cabinet's designed. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. And now, if you need more sound than that, most places have sound reinforcement. Right. And that's where the, the quality of the, of the line out was paramount for us. We spent a lot of time developing that to be a real like, you know, recording environment quality output so that you can go into the front of house sound and it sounds like what you're hearing out of the speaker not right. just a dry signal out right you know? well yeah i mean i've used it in the studio too i mean the recording is just fantastic you know and um and i know we we're gonna have barry green on thursday oh nice awesome. yeah tell him it, i said hello <laughs> yeah barry's a great guy and i know he's using the benedetto amp but that's you know there's some design i don't know if i'm allowed to talk about that but but, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I engineered that. Yeah. That was, yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, so, you know, we talk, he and I talk a little bit about sound and that kind. Barry has a great, great sound, too. Yeah. You know? He has a bud, if I'm not mistaken. He has a bud. Yeah. yeah. He has a bud. He's been using a lot. He's been using the 12, uh, the 12, uh, Benedetto Carino, mm -hmm. I guess it is. The yep. 12, you know, a lot. And, uh, but speaking of 12s, you guys have 
a Bud 12 now. We do. Yeah. Sort of. You have one. <laughs> I have one. Man, and I'm going to tell you, I had people beating down my door. I do Wednesday night in Hartford at the Half Door, and it's a big jam. Uh, we got yep. a lot of University of Hartford Hart School of Music students. Uh, of course, Jackie McLean lived in Hartford, and yep. uh, and that's where I went to school. So, uh, you know, we have a lot of cats, Nat Reeves and Steve Davis, and cats that played Smoke in Harlem and, you know, are in and out of the city. And, uh, you know, I was using the, the 10. We can talk a little bit about the 10, too. But I was using that, and I showed up the night, I think the night I got the 12, you know. And I was just like, I'm just going to bust it out. And I had a few players who plugged into it, and they were like, wow, your amp sounds so great tonight. Not that it sounded bad before, but it just sounded so so great. And I'm like, yep. well, it's a different amp. Of course, they look exactly the same if you weren't paying attention. Yeah, they're only like an inch in cabinet size they're okay. not much different in size yeah yeah so so the 12 is not in production yet or is coming to be in production what's happening no we can build them to order yeah um we don't run our own cabinet shop so okay. we have a place where we order large quantities of cabinets from and yep. we have a place we order small quantities of cabinets from okay and so there's a huge cost difference for us and so we can't really put something into full production if we're getting it from the small cabinet shop. And so okay. um, our plan was the next time we ordered 10 inch cabinets from the large facility was to also order 12s. Okay. Um, because I, I don't know what it is. Um, you, when we put it into the design software, <clears throat> you know, it shows you the graphs and like how to port it and everything like that, that yep. we've always used. Um, but that doesn't really – once the sound escapes the baffle, all bets are off as far as the software goes that we have. And uh, there's something about that 12 in that cabinet that is superior to the 10 in a lot of ways. And yeah. I'm really looking forward to putting that – getting more of them out there. And I think it's kind of like finally – it's like the ultimate mini brute – polytone mini brute 2 replacement. It's a 12-inch speaker. It's the same size. It's two channels. It's reliable. Uh, it's reliable. Know, it, it's and the reverb works good. <laughs> yeah. It's great for bass as well as guitar. I mean, yeah. it really is. Uh, it's quite an evolution of our product. Yeah. And uh, it's, uh, you know, like everything else, it's kind of on hold now production wise. But uh, right. yeah, the 12 inch bud's pretty awesome. It, it's insane. Uh, for for it's anybody insane. listening, I have one. There's one in my office that I will sell. <laughs> so if you hear that, there is one. Now one. I have one. And yeah, now so there's the one, two in existence. <laughs> yeah, the one the one you have is just the black Tolex version, right? Plain black. Plain yeah. black, yeah. Yeah, I got Actually, the alligator. We, That's the thing. You yeah, know, but we um, did build one with a matching cabinet for a guy in white. So he's got like the stormtrooper looking white Tolex oh, with the matching cabinet. Killer. <laughs> Killer. Yeah, yeah, no, um, you know, I, I will say, uh, you know, I have a, a vintage I got from one of my teachers back in the day. It's a 73 polytone. Mm -hmm. It's insanely clean. It looks as clean as the bud you sent me. Yeah. You know, had a cover, uh, but the guy never used the cover, gigged with this amp, and the reverb still works. The reverb is not great, but the amp, its sound is that Jim Hall sound. You know, and it just is sweet and creamy. But the the twelve you sent me, I just I haven't used the poly in the studio since I got it. And uh, but that's what it is. And there's something about that twelve inch speaker and that box shape. I don't know yep. what it is, but all those cats they knew something about the sound back then. You know, right? Without going too much into the math behind it, we're kind of we're kind of starving the speaker for space. Yeah. Um, and that. And the fact that we're using the speaker that we're using, those two things in combination kind of create that dark, you know, chocolate jazz tone, you know. Great. Yeah. And, and, but there's also pop to it too. It's not, mm -hmm. it's yeah. not muddy, you know. Um, you know, that's part of the power amplifier design is that it's, yeah. it does both of those, you know. So yeah. the power amplifier is pretty flat. Yep. Um, and the speaker is kind of where the flavor is. You know what I mean? Right. I get it. And then you have the preamp in there, which 
You know, right. I've had your other amplifiers, which are awesome too, but the preamp is really a nice feature because sometimes mm -hmm. you need a little bit of that juice, you yeah. know, for cut. You know, particularly like if I'm playing with a, a combo, like I play with a, several drummers and they're hard hitters, even though we're playing jazz. And, <laughs> right. You know, and I and I don't feel like I have enough cut, you know, from running through something else. You know, I've I've used all different kinds of things, but you know, with that, I could dial a little preamp in, or if I'm playing an acoustic set and I'm actually playing an acoustic instrument, it's just fantastic, you know. Yeah. Um. So that 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 that's great, and I think um, you know, I think that the thing that's cool about it is, is are the features, you know. For me, I I've got so much that I have at my disposal. In fact, what you're saying about you know, the little bud filling bigger rooms that you wouldn't expect it to. Two occasions, just recently, my one of my bass players showed up and he said, you know, I was halfway to the gig and I realized I forgot my amp. So he he made it to the gig and it was a small place, so he was going to play acoustically. He's playing upright. Yeah. And I was like, man, just plug into my amp. You know, I got two channels. And he's like, no, I'm going to blow that thing. I'm like, no. And you know what? It, it He was like, it sounded better than when I brought my amp. So... You know, he was just like, I really have to look into getting, you know, one of these, one of these boxes, you know. And then the other instance was I was playing at a place that now is closed in Hartford um, called Spectra Wired. And, uh, and I have a younger cat that I'm working with and uh, he's working on organ. He's, he's a pianist, but, um, you know, I like to work with an organ trio at times when I yeah. can, but it's hard to find a cat that can run bass lines and play, play chords. And, um, you know, I have one cat in the city that, that I worked with, and he's great, but he's, like, the only guy. And uh, so this guy, Xavier, he shows up to the gig, you know, and he's got, a, he's got like, a powered speaker. Yeah. He's got all his stuff set up, and he's ready to go. But he forgot the power cord for his speaker. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, dude, the story gets funnier, right? So we start... You know, and I'm like, all right. I counted tune in and I forget what we're playing. And he's playing, you know, and he's moving and stuff, but I don't hear any sound. He's running through the speaker on his keyboard, right? Thinking that that's going to be loud enough for what we got going on. You can't even hear him. So after the first song, you know, I go, man, can you turn up a little bit? Like, it's just not loud. He goes, oh, man, I, I, I didn't want to tell you. I forgot my power cord. So I said, look, plug into my amp. So I dialed him into my amp, just cranked up the bass. Man, it was like, it just handled it, you know, not nice. stop, you know. And that was nice. the 10. That was the 10. But, you know, um, but I'm sure the, the bud would have handled it too. But that's what I mean. Like, I've been in pinches before where, uh, you know, the half door Wednesday night I do, uh, you know, we got a lot of guitar players. We might have like four or five, six guitar players in a night come. And, you know, it's only a three-hour gig, and I played the first 45 minutes, hour set, and trying to get all those players, and, you know, guitar players aren't just taking one chorus. Right, right. You know, they're taking 16 choruses and all blues. And, and so, you know, so I can stack two of them in, you know, and they just have a lot of fun, you know, so. Uh, but like that. So what else? Anything else you guys are working on? Can you give us a sneak peek at something that maybe is on the horizon? No, uh. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's pretty direct, man. No, so, yeah, sorry to be uh, sorry to be boring, but we you know we released everything at the NAM show, so yeah, yeah. It's gonna, this is our uh, you know um, refined product has finally yeah. evolved to yeah. the refined product. You know, yeah. um, yep. There's always some you know there's some ideas on the back burner, but they're just ideas at right. this point. So. Right, right. Cool. And uh, one other thing before I let you go. So now, can you tell me a little bit about what's the status of the Rocky Mountain Guitar Show? Because you're involved in that too, right? The Arch Top Show? Yeah. As far as I know, it's still on. Okay. Because it's uh, September 11th, 12th, and 13th. That's what I thought. Um, and we've got, you know, the deposit down on the uh, the venue. Yep. The hotel's still taking reservations, so as far as I know, it's it's on. Yeah. We, we don't know crossed. what's going to happen, you know. Right. Um, 
we don't know what's going to happen but yeah for now it's it's still on yeah you know that, i don't think anybody what... knows what september is going to be like but we have no plans to cancel at this at this point that's cool yeah i mean it we same situation we have going on here you know we have events starting after the 4th of July, big outside events, right. and we just don't really know what's going to happen. So yep. uh, so it's kind of play it by ear. But I figured I'd put that out because I get questions yeah, from it, folks. As long as there aren't travel restrictions and people are willing to come, yep. it might be a little small. It might be scaled down from what it was going to be. But it was a sec. you know, we've only ever had one. So who knows what it was going to be anyway. <laughs> but, but that was very I, successful, right? That one. I didn't... Yeah. Oh, it was amazing. Yeah. It was like... Uh, it was just a jazz guitar convention and it yeah. was mind blowing the, the talent that was there and the things that we saw, like two people who, you know, know each other, but have never met in person, just sitting down doing a 45 minute pickup jam. It was just incredible. It was, uh, it really was, you know, uh, it was a magical weekend that was like, a, a life, long for me ambition to see something like that happen it's cool man. Uh, well, we, we've seen tidbits of stuff like that at nam shows yeah. and at guitar shows but this was an entire weekend dedicated to just the the idea that jazz is a conversation and you two people can sit down having never met and have a conversation on a topic and be fascinating to listen to. And then to see all the guitar builders in the same room at the same time that are just focused on arch tops and nothing else. And, uh, creating that context for everybody was, it was just magic. It was absolutely magical. Yeah. It's, it's great. Um, uh, there's a, there's a cat out on the East coast, Jim DeCava. He makes mm -hmm. arch tops and he worked with Bob Benedetto for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, they used to have a, he tells me of this. I, I was never there, but I guess in mid seventies, they used to have a New Jersey guitar show. And I guess it was, you know, Mirabella was out there. And, a, and yeah, a I had heard about the long Island guitar show a lot, Yeah, but that was kind of right when we got into the, the business and then it, you know, 2008 killed all the guitar shows. Yeah. They were all gone. Yeah. So yeah, Chris Mirabella and I had talked, for years about man we got to re somebody's got to fire up this redo you know the magic that was the long island guitar show and i never got to go so i had no real frame of reference but uh you know colorado might not be the ideal place to do it but no one else was doing it so we just kind of everybody everybody i called in a lot of favors from a lot of our artists <laughs> nobody made any money <laughs> Welcome uh, to the really music business, bro. <laughs> 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 we're not, we're not, we don't have a cash register outside of the door here either. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. You know, I, I, I said to my wife, I said, I don't know, man, I don't think I can eat another night of cheese in the can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. But yeah, I mean, you know, uh, that would be great if we got a, a, a New Jersey one. But I have to say, you know, uh, I, I wasn't able to attend the first one because I was working. I had a bunch of events, but I really wanted to. So I'm hoping to get out to this one. Uh, and, um, you know, but Colorado is a pretty damn nice place to have it. Oh, it's beautiful in September. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. You know, so like that. But, you know, it's funny because um, you were talking a little bit about the conversation. Bruce Foreman, uh, who mm -hmm. you know. Uh, does a podcast with the, I don't know the cat's name, um, but uh, you're talking about the Guitar Wink podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And uh, he was talking to his partner there on one of them. Uh, and um, of course, I know Bruce. You know, I studied with him a little bit. And so he, um, you know, the his his partner had said, you know, you jazz guys are just like crazy. You know, you have one guy from Germany and one guy from the UK, and you get together and just go on stage and play a gig and never have to rehearse and that's the whole cool thing about the language. And, you know, yep. personally, like with everything happening in the world now, so many Italian cats and friends that I, I lived in Germany for a couple of years, you know, I lived in India and it's just people that I haven't seen and talked to in so many years. And we're talking about, you know, there's no greater love, you know, it's like, yeah, a change in there. You know, I was, and how crazy it is, you know, to give you an example, how insane we can be is, you know, when you call on Skype, right, we're Skyping, you know, the music at the beginning, like, do, 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 yeah, right? Yeah. Well, I'm sitting there figuring out. 
you know, to E flat major seven to, you know, D minor seven flat five, you know, that's, that's the chord changes, you know, it's like, you know, trying to figure out chord changes to stupid, like, you know, you know, Skype songs, you know, but, right. uh, but it is, it's a good community and it's a real enduring one. You know, we have on this side of the pond, we still have Barry Harris is still kicking around and, you know, he does his Tuesday night classes still, you know, and, and they're 10 bucks, man. You know, where in the world can you go and learn from a bebop master for 10 bucks for he, and you know, it starts at eight, but he'll go till midnight or one o'clock in the morning. He just keeps yeah. talking, you know? So, <laughs> but, um, but that's awesome, man. And I really, again, I got to thank you for ha being on and I'm going to, I'm going to set you sure. free right now. But before I go, I got one more question. Okay. Pizza, pretzel or beer? I have to choose. Yeah. Uh, well, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> no question. No question at all. Hey, man. You know, there's no, no, uh, no judgment here. It's just the question <laughs> I ask everybody. I take a little tally at the end of the month and see, definitely see who beer. says what. No question. Yeah. So, listen, brother. Thanks for being on. And uh, once again, folks, Pete Hendrickson from Hendrickson Amplifiers, and please, it's HendricksonAmplifiers.com. Uh, we got the head that's shipping. You can order a custom 12. The 10 is in production, right? Yep. The 10's in production. And of course, the bud and the and the blue and uh, and any other product you could probably dream up, they can make it. I just tend to 10 send Pete a text after one of my gigs at 2.30 <laughs> in the morning. You know, I was thinking about you know, and a few days later, he'll get back to me and go, yeah, I guess, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> Anything <laughs> is possible. Anything's Anything is possible. possible. So thanks, brother. I will catch you again. All right. Peace, thanks. man. Wow. What? That was okay. Pete Hendrickson from Hendrickson Amplifiers. Uh, you know, he was just hanging on with us and doing a bunch of different talking about amps and different products and so you can get anything that you want from him that's what he said anything is possible but he's shipping the head and he's got the um the bud 12 up on special order and a bud 10 as well so um you know Efron, what's up brother good to see you i think i'm gonna play a tune you know i'm talking so much Thank you. 
by Mr. John Coltrane, written in 1958, and uh, such a great tune, uh, pardon all the mistakes, and, uh, you know, but I really enjoy playing that tune so much that I was feeling it. We have to say a big thank you for Mr. Pete Hendrickson for being on today and um, talking everything there is to talk about amplifiers and the like, and remember, it's Pete, it's HendricksonAmplifiers.com where you can get their new head, the Bud 12, on special order, and in production, the Bud 10, and a bunch of other products that are possible. So I encourage you to check them out when you can. I'm going to play another tune. What's up, Ephraim? Good to see you, man. Good to see you, brother. Thanks so much. Angela, good to see you. Cynthia, hello. And uh, I think I'm going to play a tune. Thank you. 
Yeah, the tune, Grant Stand by Mr. Grant Green, an unexpected one, but I had a request for it, and uh, I never turned down an opportunity to play that tune. We are out of time for today. I do appreciate everybody coming in and saying hello and um, all the love and praise. Good to see you on the show. Um, remember, we had Pete Hendrickson on the show. If you're checking out Hendrickson Amplifiers, please give him a big shout. He is a great guy out in Arvada, California, and uh, we like to give him our love and support. Um, big shout again to Razor's Edge, GHS Strings, Speak Friends Cables, Hendrickson Amplifiers, Acoustic Image, Benedetto Guitars, and anything else I can think of. Uh, I will see you tomorrow. Uh, on tomorrow's show uh, is just me. And uh, coming up on Thursday, we have Barry Green from uh, BarryGreenVideoLessons.com. Please feel free to uh, stop by and um, say hello to Barry and um, ask him any questions you have about guitar and things like that. Brian, I will see you again. See you tomorrow. Thanks, brother. And you all have a great evening. Peace. Bruce Gregory, Video On Demand. www.brucegregory.vhx.tv